Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up Chapter 21, Hair Color, and this is the last lecture that I'll be doing. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about some safety precautions with hair color, and then I'm also going to review, since it has been such a hefty chapter, I'm going to review um, the questions in the back of your book, and I'm going to answer them for you and just kind of, you know, review and go back over those. So, Safety precautions. Let's get into this. Um, you must do a patch test, of course. This has to be 24 to 48 hours um, prior to your application. You're looking, due to it being an aniline derivative hair color, you're looking to make sure you have a negative patch test and they do not have any allergies to the color. Um, you do not apply hair color if your abrasions are present on the scalp. Do not apply hair color if metallic or compound hair color is present. You know, we talked about the metallic salts test in one of the earlier lectures. You're looking to make sure that there are none of these present before you start your service. Do not brush the hair prior to applying the color. Again, we're not going to disrupt that scalp. Always read the manufacturers and follow the manufacturer's directions. I can say this time and time again, every manufacturer, every color line is completely different. Make sure you're reading those directions. Use cleaned and disinfected applicator bottles, brushes, combs, towels. Everything you use should have been cleaned and disinfected prior to the use. Protect your client's clothing with proper draping. Um, you know when you're doing a color service, you're going to definitely double drape. Use a chemical drape for that. Perform a strand test for color, for breakage, and discoloration. Again, this strand test is going to answer a lot of questions for you. Um, do I need to process longer? Do I need to not process as long? Do I need to use a different shade of color? Is this going to work? Um, it's going to answer a ton of those questions for you. Use an applicator bottle or bowl, glass or plastic for mixing hair color. No metal, of course. You're not going to mix that hair color until you're ready to, re ready to use the hair color. When you finish it, you're going to discard that hair color. Um, you don't want to pass it on. You can't save it for your next client. Make sure you always are wearing gloves. Of course, when you disinfect, but when you're also doing that color service. Do not permit the color to come in contact with the client's eyes. Um, if it does, make sure you have an eye washing station or eye washing solution and you know how to use it. You're familiar with that. Do not overlap during a hair color application. Again, this is going to cause that really bad line of demarcation. It's going to cause that banding that I talk about. Use a mild shampoo. An alkaline or a harsh shampoo is going to strip that color. So you want something that is acid balanced when you're shampooing. Always wash your hands before and after serving each client. All right, so let's review a little bit. Hair coloring offers you the opportunity to exercise your creative talents and bring great pleasure to your clients. Enjoy your work, but most of all, enjoy and appreciate learning now and in the future. I can say this time and time again. This is just the beginning. You guys are going to forever learn not just new techniques, uh, but new products. Um, you're going to have new supplies to work with as you progress through your career in the industry. Hair color techniques, fashions, and formulations constantly are changing. However, the basics do not change. Professionals who specialize in hair color must constantly learn new techniques and keep up with those changes. That's going to be where your continuing education comes into play. Um, you know, when you leave us, you have to do so many continuing education hours to keep those licenses. This is to keep you fresh and updated. All right, so we're going to go through some of these questions. I believe there's about 20 of these. And I am going to answer them for you, but also this is a big review, okay? So why do people color their hair? Um, people color their hair, obviously, to cover up, to blend gray, to enhance an existing hair color, to create a fashion statement, um, or expressing themselves, correct unwanted tones, um, to accentuate a particular haircut, all of those reasons. 
how does the hair's porosity affect hair color? Porosity is the hair's ability to absorb moisture. Porous hair is going to accept hair color faster and can result in a cooler tone than less porous hair. Hair with low porosity has a cuticle that is very tight. The hair is resistant, which means it's difficult for moisture or chemicals to penetrate and thus requires longer processing time for hair color procedure. So you need to know how porous the hair is. Is the hair going to accept that color and grab it, go cooler, go darker, or do I need to process this hair a little bit longer because maybe my hair is not porous? Maybe it's dense. Number three, how many types of melanin are found in the hair? And describe each of them. There are three different types. You have eumelanin, that is your black and brown colors to the hair. Theomelanin, that gives the blonde and red colors to the hair. Then you have mixed melanin. This is a combination of natural hair color that contains both theomelanin and eumelanin. Number four, water levels. What does the level system help you determine when formulating hair color? Levels is a unit of measurement used to identify the darkness and lightness of a color. Level is saturation, density, or concentration of a color. The level system helps determine the lightness or darkness of color. Hair color levels are arranged on a scale from 1 to 10. 1 is the darkest, 10 is the lightest. Okay. Name the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Primary colors are blue, red, yellow. Secondary, green, orange, and violet. Tertiary are blue-green, blue-violet, red-violet, red-orange, yellow-orange, and yellow-green. Okay, remember your primary colors cannot be made up. Primary, it is what it is. You cannot make them. Um, primary colors that sit next to each other, equal parts, is going to make that secondary color. Same, so a primary and a secondary color beside each other on the color wheel make that tertiary color. Okay. What is the role of tone and intensity in hair color? The term tone or tonality is used to describe warmth or coolness of a color. Intensity is the strength of that color. It is described as soft, medium, or strong. Okay, so tone we're talking about, is it warm? Do I see red? Do I see gold? Do I see copper? Or is it cool? Do I see blue? Do I see icy? Do I see uh, violet, green? Those types of things. Um, and then intense, you have like a 7RR or a 7-44. That means it is not just a 7 red, it's a 7 red red. So it's a very intense color. Okay, next up, what are the categories of hair color? And briefly describe each one of them. Okay, you have temporary color, hair color. It makes a physical change. There is no chemical change here. There is no chemical change in the hair shaft and no patch test is required. The pigment molecules are large. They do not penetrate that cuticle layer, only coat the cuticle layer and it is removed by shampooing so this is nothing that's going to last very long. Semi-permanent hair color. It is formulated to last through sh several shampoos. Um, the pigment molecules are small enough to partially penetrate the hair shaft and stain the cuticle layer but also small enough to diffuse out of the hair during shampoo. So this is going to fade over time. It does not lighten hair there is no significant color change in these. Demi-permanent. Um, this is going to be your deposit only. This is very popular. This is what I use most of. It is similar in nature to semi-permanent, but longer lasting. It is formulated to deposit, but not lift. That means it does not lighten color. It has a smaller tint molecule that is able to penetrate the hair shaft. It is mixed with a low volume developer. Um, this is going to be 10 or lower. Um, remember, your developer is hydrogen peroxide. It is used to blend gray hair, enhance natural colors, refresh faded color, tone pre-lightened hair, and is used in color correction. Okay, then you have permanent hair color. 
designed to lighten and deposit color at the same time. The color is mixed with a developer called hydrogen peroxide, of course. It traps those dye molecules in the hair. Permanent colors can match, lighten, deepen, and cover gray hair. How does hydrogen peroxide developer work in a hair color formula? Okay, very important. You have to know how these things are working chemically to be able to use them safely. Hydrogen peroxide developer is an oxidizing agent that when mixed with an oxidation hair color, supplies the necessary oxygen gas to develop the color molecules and create a change in natural hair color. Okay, so when mixed with hair color, it supplies an oxygen, it develops those color molecules, that's what creates the change. What are the five key questions to ask when formulating hair color? Okay, so you're gonna ask your client or yourself really, but look at the client's hair. What is the natural level? Is there gray included? What is the level and tone of previously colored hair? What is the client's desired level and tone? Are contributing pigments or undertones going to be revealed? and what colors should be mixed to get the desired result. Number 10, why is a patch test useful in hair coloring? A patch test is used to determine whether a client has allergies or sensitivities to the hair color mixture. Number 11, what is a preliminary strand test and why is it used? This is a test taken on a strand of hair that will tell you how the hair is gonna to react to the color that you have formulated and how long it needs to process. It's gonna answer a lot of questions for you and this will help you change your formulation if needed. Number 12, explain the action of lighteners. Hair lighteners are used to create a light blonde shade that is not achievable with permanent hair color, okay? Color does not lift color. Can you lift virgin hair with hair color? You can but you're not gonna be able to go over four levels with that. So if you need to go really high or if they already have artificial color on their hair, you're gonna to have to use a lightener. Um, so you're gonna lighten the hair prior to application of the final color, lighten the hair to a particular shade, or maybe you're using it to brighten and lightening an existing shade. Only certain parts of the hair, such as highlights, and lighten dark, natural, or color treated levels. Okay, so you can use that for several different things. We can do all over lightener. We can do um, highlights. Um, we can do certain parts of the hair, like a balayage. We don't have to necessarily put it in foil. You can do a cap technique, all of those that we have learned about in class. What is the procedure for a virgin single process color service? Single process hair coloring is a process that lightens and colors the hair in a single application. A patch test is done prior to the service. The color is applied first where the hair is the most resistant. This is typically the back, but it is not always the case. It is applied from the mid shaft, half an inch from the scalp, not including the ends. You're gonna leave about one inch on the ends. Color development is checked with a strand test, then color is applied to the scalp area and pulled through those ends. The hair is rinsed, shampooed, and styled. Make sure you um, follow your manufacturer's directions for that as well. Number 14, what are the two processes involved in a double process hair color? The hair is first pre-lightened and then toned, um, or deposit only color is applied. So that means you're gonna lighten the hair all over and then a toner or deposit only. So this is gonna be a demi cup permanent. It's gonna take those tones away, neutralize it, whatever you need it to do. Number 15, name and describe the various forms of hair lightener. Okay, you have oil, you have cream, and you have powder. Oil and cream lighteners and some powders are considered to be on the scalp lighteners. They can be used directly on the scalp. You're gonna find this in your manufacturer's directions. 
most powder lighteners are referred to as off the scalp lighteners, which means they cannot be used directly on the scalp. Number 16, what is the purpose of a toner and when is it used? A toner is a hair coloring product used on primarily on pre-lightened hair to achieve pale, delicate colors. You can also use a toner when you're neutralizing to unwanted tones. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on really, really light hair. Number 17, what are the three most commonly used methods for highlighting? Okay. We did several of these techniques. I introduced you guys to balayage, uh, root shadowing. We did a multi-dimensional with high and low, um, but the methods are cap, foil, and balayage. Balayage is also known as a freeform technique. Um, we learned how to do baby lights. Um, as you further in the program, we're gonna do a little more of on the scalp lightener. We're going to do uh, more cheesy lights. I will give you head shapes and you will be able to create your own or follow a foiling pattern as you progress through the programs. So the cap technique, it involves pulling clean dry strands through a perforated cap with a thin plastic or metal hook and then lightening or toning those strands. The full technique involves coloring selected strands of the hair by slicing or weaving out sections of the hair, placing them on a foil or plastic wrap, applying lightener on color, and sealing them in a foil or plastic wrap. The balayage or freeform technique involves painting lightener. This is usually going to be a clay lightener directly onto clean styled hair. Number 18. List seven tips for achieving gray coverage, okay? You wanna formulate at a level seven medium blonde for deeper for the best gray coverage. Use 20 volume developer, process for the full time of 45 minutes. Add that neutral base color to your formula. If you have 25%, use 25% of a neutral color in your formula. 50% gray, you're gonna use 50% of that neutral base color in your formula. 75% gray, you're going to use 75% of that neutral base color in your formula. Number 19, list the rules of a color correction. Okay, do not panic, remain calm. Determine the nature of the problem. Determine what caused the problem. Develop a solution. The most important to me is take one step at the time. Never guarantee an exact result to your client and always strand test for accuracy. Number 20, the last review question for the chapter. List safety precautions and here it says five. I'm gonna give you all of them that we went over um, to follow during a hair color process. So make sure you do that patch test 24 to 48 hours prior to the application. Um, do not apply tint if you have any abrasions on the scalp. Um, do not apply tint if any metallic salts are found. Do not brush the hair prior to applying color. Read your manufacturer's directions and follow them. Use clean and disinfected um, supplies, materials, implements. Protect your client's clothing with proper draping. Perform a strand test. Use an applicator bottle or bowl that is made of glass or plastic when you're mixing. Do not mix the tint before you're ready to use it. Discard any leftover tint. Wear gloves to protect your hands. Do not permit the color to come in contact with your client's eyes. Do not overlap during a retouch. Do not pull it through the ends during a retouch either. Use a mild shampoo. Um, you know an alkaline shampoo is gonna strip the hair color. Always wash your hands before and after serving a client. Thank you guys. I really hope the lectures helped you in chapter 21. It was a huge, huge chapter. You guys make sure that you study really good. We are going to also be talking about hair color as we go along in class as well. So any questions that you can think of, please, please ask me. Thank you.